What's up, my people? Welcome to my YouTube channel, The Kenyan American Home or TV, whichever you're watching me from. And if this is your first time here, welcome. In Kenya, we say karibu sana. Welcome, welcome. And, uh, you know, uh, hit, don't, hit the subscribe button and you'll become part of the Kenyan American Home family. We are pleased to have you on board and, uh, you know, we hope you'll enjoy your time here. So, you know, feel free, ask questions, you know, leave us comments. We, we love, we love the interaction, you know, likes, comments, shares, all those. But welcome, welcome, welcome so much. And, and thank you so much for my returning subscribers, my you know, you, you guys have been, you guys have been amazing, have been amazing. We've been, we've been growing every single day. And so appreciate all the love and support, appreciate all the love and support. So today I'm here to talk about a very, I think it's a very important topic because this, this problem often, uh, you know, and I've, I've gotten this question so many times, people are often in this, you know, in this, in this, in this problem where uh, you talk about the, you know, you talk about the interviews. You know, you, you, you're filling out your DS-160. So the DS-160 is the form that is used for non-immigrant visas. Non-immigrant visas, like, so you use the same form for, you know, an F1 student, uh, an M1 student, which is a vocational student, uh, a J1 student, an exchange, you know, an exchange. Uh, you, have, uh, you have O visas, I visas, all these visas that are non-immigrant. Uh, you uh, use the DS-160 form. Not the old visa, by the way. You use the DS-160 form to be able to, you know, to be able to complete those. Oh, I forgot the biggest one that a lot of people use is a visitor visa. So a lot of people use a visitor visa to fill, you know, to uh, to to come to the U.S. Because a lot of people come to the U.S. through the visitor visa. But oftentimes the problem people have is after you've completed and submitted your DS-160, people often are like, if you have to change things, like you know. There's a life change that happened. There's a life change that happened. All of a sudden, you came into money. You inherited money, or you got a you got a, a, a you know you got a better paying job than the one you did when you filled out your DS 160. How do you how do you change that? You know, or so many things have happened. Or the other thing that the other common problem that people seem to have is, you know, you you, you you're going for a conference and. The date that you the conference is in, there is no open slots. You keep checking every single day, but because you know so many people want to come to the U.S., there is no slots that are available. And so the slot that you get is after the conference is over, or maybe you are coming for an event, but the slot that you're getting is after the event is over. You are coming to visit somebody, coming for their you know for an anniversary, for graduation, for all these things, but there is no appointment before you know the date that you're supposed to be there and so people end up in issues where they're like so what am i going to do now you're going to the embassy not only because going to the embassy is not easy i mean you're nervous there's so you know there's anxiety there's so many things that are happening but it's like on top of that there's an added weight of so okay so i have to explain that i'm actually going to an event that has already passed because you know, most people don't know how to make the change, the correction in the DS-160. And so I'm here to help you, you know, how can you be able to make a change or a correction to your DS-160? Now, unfortunately, there's no way that you can, you know, after you've hit submit, there's no way that you can be able to go and, 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 and update your DS-160. Once it's gone, it's gone. But there's one way that you can be able to change it. You know, there's one way that you can be able to change it, which is what I'm going to, which is what, which is how I'm going to, which is what I'm going to talk to you today. So what you can do is you can go and complete a new DS-160. Yes, complete a new one and complete it with all the information that you need. Update it the way you want to update it. And then you take that, you know, you take that, once you print the confirmation page, take that confirmation number and go and update it where you booked your appointment. And so I'm going to walk you through that whole process. But there's some things that you need to know about, you know, you need to know about changing some things, you know, after, after you've completed your DS-160 and even after you've made the payment. So when, when, it, when it comes to that page, and I'll take you to that page where you actually book your appointment, uh, you can update your email address and your phone number anytime, anytime. So anytime you want to update that, as you can log into that account and update your email address and, and, and phone number. But 
you can only change your passport number and your DS-160 number only once after you have made the payment. So after you've made the visa payment, you can only update your DS-160 once, just one time, okay? Or your passport. Once you update it one time, it locks itself. If you try and go in again, it's, you know, it, it can't let you edit. It can't let you do anything because you only have one chance after you've, after you've made the payment. Now, you may not change your name, your surname, your country that issued your passport, your country of birth, your date of birth, your gender that is associated with you. And, uh, you know, so you can't change those things. Those things will be grayed out. And I'll show you, I'll kind of show you as we walk through it. But so if you want to edit all this other information that is grayed out, like your name and all those so many things that is grayed out, the only way for you to be able to do that is cancel your appointment. When you cancel your appointment, you can be able to edit your information. Cancel your appointment and be able to, you know, uh, edit your information. But otherwise, like I said, once you've paid your once you paid your visa payment, you can update your DS-160 once or your DS-160 or passport number once. So let me walk you through that process. I know this is this will be a very helpful information to a lot of people who have uh, gotten into this problem in the past. All right. So let me share my screen. Da -da 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 -da. Share my screen. I'm sharing the wrong one. All right. So let's start. So this is the page, and I'm gonna put the link. Uh, I'm gonna put the link below. So this is the page that you go to when, as a Kenyan, uh, I've used an example of Kenyan. Depending on whatever country you are in, the system should be the same. But uh, so you you go to this page, and then once you get to this page, there is this sign in. If you don't see the sign in, uh, just hit the sign in here, and it's gonna let you sign in. But it's pretty much your email address and your password. And then you check this, the privacy, and then click uh, sign in, all right? Click sign in. If this is the first time you've never been here, you haven't, you know, you you, you just finished your DS-160, the, the way, you know, I've, I did a video on how to book an appointment, and this is where you start, is you create an account. So you go create an account, and then it's going to let you. So once, uh, so I have an account that, that we're going to use today as an example. Uh, and let me go to that. So once you log in, and you already have an account in, and you you know you you paid for your v for your for your visa fees and everything, and you have an appointment that is booked. It's gonna tell you the appointment date, and it's gonna tell you where you you just you know when you get your visa, it's gonna tell you your document delivery location. So it's gonna tell you where your DHL will deliver your passport with your visa. All right, and then below there, it's your applicant name, the passport number, your DS one sixty, your visa class whatever, whether it's a B1, F1, M1, whatever visa it is. And then there's a check, you know, you can check the DS-160 status. But then here, there's this wheel. So see this wheel here? This wheel, once you click it, the drop down, it gives you, if you want to see the details, but also the edit. Edit is what we want to do if, you know, we want to comp we want to change our DS-160. And then once you hit, edit it's gonna take you uh it's gonna take you to this page let me share this page and so you'll notice here some of the things are grayed out so see how it gives me a a, a red sign once i go to something that is grayed out so some these are the things you cannot change you cannot change your name you cannot change you know your your passport country your country of birth your country of permanent residence your visa class your date of birth you know your gender all those things you can't change but you can change your passport number, but you can also change your DS-160 number. So this is where I was telling you, the way to be able to change, make a correction is go ahead and complete a new DS-160. Once you complete a new DS-160, uh, and let me let me say this, because I said it in the, in the, the video, if you haven't seen my video on the step-by-step -step how to fill the DS-160, you need to do that because I, I have given you a lot of information in that, you know, going line by line telling you this is what they're asking. This is what you should fill out. Trying to give you, you know, the interpretation, like uh, walking you through that process, making it easier for you. Uh, watch that video. But one of the things that I say in that video, 
when you get to the last page where it gives you a summary, a review, or because every all, all the US documents give you a page, last page for you to review before you hit submit. Okay. So once you get to that page, last page, when it tells you to review all your information, before you hit submit, if you go to the bottom right of that page, there's a, there you, sh you, you should see a print button. Print the whole of your DS-160 there. This is very important, very key, because when you go to the embassy, when you go for your appointment, they ask you questions based on how you filled out your DS-160. Some people only print out the confirmation page. That is important. That's what they require because they'll take that, you know, to confirm. That's what they, they need. They need the confirmation page. But you need to print out all your DS-160 so that you remember. You can read it before your embassy. You can go through it and make sure that whatever you wrote is what you will go to the embassy with. Knowing if they ask you a question, you have to be consistent with the way you responded in your DS-160. So very important. Please make sure you print off your DS-160, the whole of it. Because it's going to help you prepare for your interview. Because your interview comes from your DS-160. That's And so oftentimes you see people who go to the embassy or maybe they've used an agent. An agent has completed the DS-160 for them. They have no idea what the agent put. And then you show up in an you show up in an interview and they ask you questions and you give totally differing answers. That is how that's inconsistency. Inconsistency is, is an indication that you're lying. You don't know what you're doing, or it's it might also be like deception. So why say this and then, you know why 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 feel this out and then you go to the embassy and you're saying something totally different? That's why it's so important. And I try to tell people. If as much as possible, don't use agents. Find somebody, you know, find somebody who can help you complete your DS-160. I do that, but I do that at a fee because I've already given you the information to be able to do it yourself. And for me to do that, you know, I do it for a fee, but I'll walk through with you. I'll make sure I walk it through with you. I help you understand. We discuss it together that way. And I'll make sure that we print out that the whole of your DS-160. Discuss this. That way, when you go to the embassy, you already know your story. You don't have two stories. Now, the problem comes in when you have two stories. That you have one story in your DS-160, and you have one story that someone else or you yourself prepared for. So I wanted to say that because it's very important. But let's... So you cannot be able to edit the DS-160 once you've submitted it. But you can create a new one. Go start from afresh and create a new DS-160. Once you go through that process, printed out your whole DS-160 and printed out the confirmation page, you will see your confirmation number. Once you get your confirmation number, then you come here to where you had already scheduled your appointment and you change your DS-160. So see this, this, this see the passport? Now the passport screen is changed. So if you want to change your passport, you can come in here and change your passport, all right? But And also, if you want to change your DS-160, you can come in here and change your DS-160 to whatever new DS-160 uh, you have. And then uh, the other information is grayed out. You can change your phone number anytime, your email anytime. And then after you do all that, click Save. Once you hit Save, it's going to save that information. Make sure. You have everything that you need when you're completing your DS-160. That way you don't have to keep coming back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and you know what you're doing. I wanted to say this because this is very important information. And I've seen people struggling, you know. I've seen people struggling with conferences because you're you're going to the embassy and you're trying to explain, I, I want you to give me a visa, but the conference has already passed. That's like... <laughs> it's 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 I think it's 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 in an African mindset that would tell us that it's okay to do that. But like for someone else, this is like it's totally different, you know, because we like hey, we like to do things last minute, and so we wanna we wanna we wanna we wanna go right away and we wanna schedule an appointment right away, but we don't take the time to think that there might not be appointments. 
It's a very African thing to do things last minute. Yeah? Because Americans usually, like most, mo- not all of them, it's, you know, you plan ahead of time. That's the wise thing to do. And so if you know that you are going to a conference in 2025, you want to start, you know, 2024, 22. You go and, and, and apply ahead of time. Apply ahead of time. That way you don't have to worry about n- missing an appointment or getting an appointment that is after whatever event that you're going to. But because we are, you know, you, <laughs> yeah, uh, because I am you and you are me and we are, we, you know, we are Africans. We do that. That happens. We do that. We love last minute. We love cramping it last minute. So I'm here to tell you, you know, give you, can I give you, give you a heads up that you don't have to worry about having that inconsistency going to the, to the embassy that you can actually go in and complete a new DS-160, you know, find a new conference that is within the date that you're supposed that, that you've, you've gotten your visa. Your, your appointment. Find, find that because it's very, very important. Very, very, very important. And uh, yeah, so I don't know if I wanted to go again and, uh, you know, talk about, uh, talk about appointments. But here's the other thing too, is uh, because I, I know a lot of people don't know this. A lot of people don't know this, but you can change your appointment anytime. You can change and, and, and dates, what happens is dates keep opening up every single day. Dates, they open up every single day. And so just because you did not get an appointment, just because you did not get an appointment, uh, you know, you did not get an appointment yesterday, doesn't mean that you don't have one today. All right. So let me, yeah, let me actually show you this. I've done a video previously. I've done a video previously. And uh, I will walk you through what is available right now. What is available right now? Okay, so. All right. Okay, okie dokie. Let me share this with you. All right. And can make it bigger, bigger, bigger. All right. So if you log into your page, you know, one of the first things, uh, one of the first things that you see is, uh, is this information. And then, you know, uh, you can print your instructions, email instructions, and then there's a reschedule appointment. So you have reschedule appointment right there. All you need to do is, if you need to, you know, if you need to cancel the appointment, cancel the appointment. Uh, This is the other thing too, for people who, uh, and this might be another, it might be another, it might be another, what do you call it? It might be another video that I do. But if you're like going uh, for the DV lottery, if you're going for the DV lottery and you have members of your family, you can all go together. You can all go together. You can add an applicant just the same way, you know, in the same DS-160, you can, you can keep, you can keep adding, adding, uh, adding applicants. So you can add an applicant there to go, to go, to go to the embassy. You can cancel the appointment, but you can also reschedule the appointment. When you click reschedule the appointment, uh, it will give you that option to reschedule. And, you know, so it'll tell you, you've filled out your application, you've, you've checked your courier, you've checked your payment, and you've scheduled. So uh, your, your appointment is not yet, you know, it's not yet, it's not yet uh, here. And then you can, you can choose whatever consular you want. Uh, we're going to do Nairobi. And then let's check what available dates are here. Let's check what available dates are here. Okay. Uh, so let me see. Let me see. I'm trying to make it. Uh, trying to make it small. That way I can fit in. All right. Okay. So it looks like there's no appointments for no open appointments for October, November right now. No appointments open for December. Keep checking this every single day because they open up every, they open up because people cancel. See that option for cancel appointment, people do that. People often do cancel appointments. So, oh yeah. And I'm pretty sure right now there's, there's nobody, there's somebody who was asking that because they're looking for January dates, looking for January dates. And they were just asking me about this the other day. So there's uh, January 11th. That is open. Let me see how many slots, how many time slots. 
there's two time, time slots that are open. Uh, two time slots, uh, January 11th, and then January uh, 12th, there's two time slots open, 7 and 7.30. So that's why you got to keep checking. You got to keep checking because these things open up. But otherwise, there's nothing in, uh, you know, there's nothing in uh, February. And uh, there's some in March, some in March. I'll do, I'll do this and then just do a video uh, to let people know that there are some dates that are available for March and January. But otherwise, I think April, there should be a lot of appointments in April. Yeah, April there are and going on and on and on. So there are. But January 11th and 12th, it's open. All right. So yeah. And then you just do that and go ahead and reschedule. So that's, I think that's very important information too. Very important information. So again, you know, thank you for joining me. Uh, you know, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And, uh, you know, uh, and, and don't forget to hit the notification bell because you'll get notified every time I upload a video. And so, you know, leave me a comment, leave me a like, leave me a comment, leave me a like. You know, if you like my content, please let me know. Please let me know. Please let me know. As always, you know, uh, let me know if you like my content. If you if you want to bless me, I'm always open for blessing. You know, if you want to bless me, I am always open to be blessed. I, I, don't, I don't say no to blessings. So I won't say no to blessings. If you want to bless me, uh, that is my, you know, that's my, that's my M-Pesa. And uh, my cash app is in my bio too, if you know. If you want to do that, I will appreciate. I will appreciate. I have not made it. I have, you know, yeah, I, I still go to work. I still go to work. I, I can't say no to blessings. But otherwise, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Share this information with somebody else who needs, you know, who needs it. Uh, and uh, thank you. And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you for all the support that you show me. And, uh, you know, uh, God bless you guys. God bless you guys. God bless you guys. Until, you know, until next time. Until next time. Till next time. Yeah. Fit, Dima. Fit.